This is my interpretation of a surf candy fly, which is usually used in salt water for fishing in the surf. However, I use this for targeting bass here in central Texas, and it works great. It kind of suspends in the water, and I love it for the summertime. I'm using a size one eagle claw hook, cheapest hook you can get. I got these from Walmart. I definitely recommend using hardier, better hooks if you're tying these to like sell, but for my purposes, this hook works fine. Tie your thread on, and you're going to run a thread, a thread base all the way back uh, because you're going to need that for grip once you do the next step, which is actually to put foam strips on the fly. For some reason, I am putting in the bucktail here. That comes later. I was jumping the gun on that one. What you're really going to do is get some white foam. This is just cheap foam, also from Walmart. You don't need to go and spend money on those tiny little sheets that you can get from a a fly store that costs like 15 times as much per square inch versus the one that you can buy from Hobby Lobby or Walmart, but you're gonna cut a thin strip. The key is to make it thin enough so that it will stay inside the tubing that you're gonna use for the body of the fly. I cut two strips because I want this one to sink slowly. If you want to make it float, put more in. If you don't want it to float or you want it to sink faster, you can actually tie weights in. You can tie little rattles in here. The cool thing about this fly is you can really change the way you want it to be by adapting the materials that you put inside the body. And you'll see what I mean by that later. So I'm tying in these foam strips um, so that it won't sink as fast, so that it'll slowly sink when I throw it, kind of like a struggling minnow. Now you're going to take some bucktail. I'm using white. Notice that I've flipped the fly upside down and I'm going to put the white on the bottom side because the bottom of the bait fish and the minnows that I'm trying to impersonate, uh, they have white bellies. And so I want the white part to be on the underside. When I'm tying this in, you're doing loose wraps to set it up and then tightening it after the fact. And I'm going well behind the eye because if you crowd the eye with material, you're not going to be able to tie in the body, uh, this tubing that we're going to use later. So make sure you're leaving plenty of space behind the eye of the hook so that you're not crowding it with material. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. If you want to, you can put some flashaboo or crystal flash. This is flashaboo that I like that looks super fishy and it will add kind of some sparkle. Uh, what I'm done, I've already halved it off camera, I think. And so I'm just going to pull the excess fibers and put them on the other side of the hook. So you put some on the right side to start and then fold over the other side to the left side uh, to finish so that it's as evenly balanced as you can make it. Then you're going to take some brown bucktail. And I apologize for the exposure change in my camera. I'm still figuring out the right way to film these little fly tying videos, especially since I put the camera between myself and the fly to get that fish tank backdrop. Anyway, tie in your, your bucktail, your brown bucktail on top of the fly, clean it up as best you can and make a big uh, knot of, uh, of thread so that it's not going anywhere. And so that's kind of the base and body. You're going to now put in some, I think this is tan crystal flash. I think it's more specifically a bonefish tan. And again, I'm going to do the same thing I did with the flashaboo on the bottom. I'm going to tie it in on one side of the fly and then fold over the, the excess onto the other. Oh, it looks like I just put in two separate parts on both sides so that it's extra, extra flashy. That works too. So you fold it all back, it gets nice and flashy and it doesn't matter if it looks kind of bad. Like this looks really rough compared to some of the prettier flies you see people tie on social media. Uh, doesn't matter, the tubing body is going to cover all of this. And so any imperfections you have are gonna be completely taken care of because you've got the cheat code of covering this up with this beautiful flex body that I get off of Etsy. You can literally get like 15 feet of it for I think $10 or less. There's a couple of different people on Etsy. I'm gonna try and relook and figure out exactly which dealer it is and put it in the description so that you guys know exactly where to buy the right stuff. But I'm attempting to use my grandfather's ancient lighter because I couldn't find my Bic lighter. I would not recommend using uh, this type of lighter for this, but it's what I had on hand. I'm doing that to cauterize the fibers so that they won't move. But another thing you'll see me do here 
once I tie it in is put some super glue on the different points of the fibers so that that will keep them in place as well. So it's important that you put the body material past the eye of the hook. Otherwise, you're going to really struggle when tying it in. And I put that little turtleneck past the eye of the hook because what I'm going to do is cut it down to size so that it's behind the eye of the hook. And then I'll actually use flame again to, you have to be careful because you don't want it to burn, but you're going to, once you've cut it up and there's little sticky fibers left, you can actually melt it to go behind the hook. And if you have to, you can kind of strong arm the material a little bit down the shank uh, in order to make sure that the eye is good enough, but just keep on working at it. And if you have to just glue over it, even if it fills in the eye of the hook, and then you can use a, I think it's called a bodkin, a bodkin point or another hook point to just pierce a hole so that uh, you can get line in there. But that should be good enough. Like that would fit, that by itself right there, it would fish and catch fish pretty much anywhere uh, in my opinion. But see what I'm doing here with the glue. I'm gluing the back parts so that those fibers don't come undone. That way they stick together. I'm going to cover this whole thing in resin anyway, which will keep it together. But that's holding it together in case for some reason uh, they start to fray. Next, I'm going to take my cheap uh, 3D eyes from Amazon and put those in. I'd never buy eyes from a fly store. It's a really bad return on investment. You can buy like 500 or 1,000 of them in packs of 1,000 or 500 in different sizes off of Amazon or Alibaba or Wish.com. And it's one of the few items uh, that I think are still where the quality of what you get is just, it, even though it's a lower quality than the eyes you get from fly shops, it doesn't matter because if you put resin over it, it makes them strong and makes them pop. And I just, I would rather buy those specific materials. Like there's just a couple of materials and I'll do a video on this someday uh, that I just refuse to buy from fly shops. But um, that's another topic. So you're going to start to put, uh, I'm using a UV hard or UV thick and this is essentially going to harden the body of the fly and make it look nice and translucent. And then the way that you secure it is with a UV resin light. That's going to cure it and make it nice and hard. And then after the fact, you're going to come in with some UV resin thin. It's on this little brush. And that's supposed to make it pop even more. It's kind of like a polish almost. So the the thick resin stuff doesn't quite penetrate into the fibers as well. But this, this resin will fill in the cracks really, really well. And it really makes things pop. And it adds kind of a shine and a finish to make your fly look a lot more professional than it really is. I use this. It's like MSG in, in food. It just makes it taste so much better than it deserves to taste. Uh, but it really works, and I use it on so many flies to kind of pad the stats a little bit. Clean it up as best you can, and that is my surf candy fly. Stay tuned if you want to see how I use it to catch some fish. So in this video, I'm on Town Lake in Austin, Texas, Ladybird Lake, on my little tube boat that I can pack in my truck. And I'm using a five-weight rod with floating line and I catch this nice bass uh, what I did to catch this bass was I was throwing as far as I could across kind of an open flat area right before a drop off between this island at Redbud Island in the trees where I know a lot of fish swim and look for minnows and so I was throwing I was experimenting with different speeds but in Lake Austin for some reason during the warmer months of the year a faster retrieve usually works better. And so I was retrieving my line super, super quickly, which means that it wasn't very deep. But I got this nice bass. It was the only bass that I caught all day. But I was glad to get some good footage of it so that I could use it for the purpose of having tied this fly recently. But a uh, super fun fi flight, super fun fight. And uh, this fly does really, really well, especially near drop-offs on this lake. That was awesome. Thanks, buddy. This next clip, I'm in yeah, East are. Texas on a small private lake called Skelly Lake with uh, cousin Neil. 
we're in a little flat bottom boat and I'm using the same fly with the same rod, five weight floating line and my retrieve is a lot slower because this is such a low pressure lake, it doesn't get fish very much. So I'm just letting this, this fly come in really, really slowly. It's not very deep and it, it crushed. I caught so many fish on it that day, but it's kind of like shooting fish in a barrel on that, on that lake. Regardless, here's some more footage of catching some bass on the surf candy fly in East Texas. It's such an easy okay. fly to tie. The materials you get are relatively inexpensive. And uh, I think it just looks kind of unique. Like there's not a lot of freshwater fishermen that are using a surf candy, but uh, it's really, really fun. It's really nice. easy to throw because it's super right. light and it's aerodynamic. So you don't need like a big heavy rod to throw it. I can throw this fly on a three weight or a four weight rod. Uh, whereas a lot of the guys that are catching bass are through, using six, seven, eight weights to throw big clunky flies. And you can catch really big fish on this fly as well. Oh, but, nice. uh, you know, if you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel and let me know how you think I could improve my content or the way that I make my videos. Right. Thanks I'm so much. Try with your rod real quick. I'm